think this um, the previous topic what we have done was about the international economy. So as part of international economy, we have learned about what's international trade. Um, then um, protectionism, balance of payment, globalization, Tesla. Um, the questions about this are uh, we've not completed. Uh, so let's, uh, for some time, we'll work out these questions. And then after that, we can move uh, forward to the next topic, which would be about uh, the international aspects. So certain things about international aspects, like uh, what are international markets, then exchange rate, uh, resume, single currency zones, and forex risk. See, um, if we do this one, I think uh, the, See the um, financial uh, aspects in the domestic market in the international market, uh, all of them would be done. So that's the only topic which is remaining. After which it is the rest of the syllabus is quite uh, simple and easy. We would be looking at uh, some uh, basic parts of financial management and some part of statistics. So that is all what is uh, remaining. So first, before we proceed further to look at the international aspects, let's just uh, work out the questions which are connected to um, the international economy. So I'll take you to the questions file. So <clears throat> from question number 106, let's take it up and then um, work it out. A tariff restriction imposed on the flow of imports into a country would be expected to lead to all of the following, except which one? An improvement in the trade balance, a reduction in unemployment, reduced competition for domestic producers, a fall in the rate of inflation. The question is uh, talking about a tariff restriction. So tariff restriction imposed on the flow of import. Just let's look into that. So is it about the uh, improvement in trade balance, reduction in unemployment, reduction, reduced competition for domestic producers or a fall in the rate of inflation? It is definitely not about domestic producers. This is something to do with the international trade. So um, if they are looking at uh, having a, a restriction on uh, the flow of imports. So, We've looked into uh, restrictions on imports. Um, what are some context? Okay, quotas were there. Um, there would there would be some uh, restriction about um, how much can be imported. Countries might try to limit imports by uh, these are the various ways. The um, the context in which it is asked uh, is it about uh, improvement in trade balance or unemployment or domestic for, uh, protect, uh, competition for domestic producers is reduced or a fall in the 
rate of inflation so if we are looking at that so which one would be most suitable or appropriate if we uh, talk about by uh, restricting imports what would happen for import uh, they will have to make the um, payment so fall in, in the we fall in the rate of inflation like domestic producers they can increase the rates and then we have like what about inflation like since import will be less so domestic producers will increase the rates of the product and so how how do we connect it to inflation so it should be about uh, the balance between imports and exports no? so, uh, yeah so So the various uh, um, theories about inflation, various uh, opinions so about that. that they do not talk about uh, imports. The the restriction on imports later on comes down to the it will connect to cost push inflation, no ma'am. Like. Causes are uh, cost factors such as high union power, oil prices. Okay, so money flow is spent on uh, imported raw materials. So the price is high. Okay. If it is a cost push uh, view, it talks about uh, the imported raw materials. Yeah. The cause for rise in prices would be. Uh, one of the factors is because of imported raw materials because the money flow yeah. is all used to import the raw material payment of raw material so in that case when the prices rise so um, the flow of money um, is towards the imported raw material okay then the cost increases when the cost increases the price increases price increase is one one reason for inflation so cost increases the selling price also increases so this is one cause or one reason why inflation is there in the economy okay so intricately we have to be very careful i my focus was all about because the there are quotas and then uh, something yeah, to do yeah. with the trade balance focusing on the imported uh, imported raw materials that is why I was able to connect mm. very carefully we have to deal with that imposed yeah. on the imports into country would be expected to lead to all of the following all of the following except 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 okay which one <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So this is the. I was not convinced at all for this one. So except which one? Sorry, like it's in rounds. You have to connect so many dots. Huh? No, because I was so focused on the trade of trade balance, etc. All of that. Even I was, yeah. Even I was thinking from that perspective, but I remembered the imported part of cost. That was that. Why I was able to connect a bit. Which, uh, except which one? So to an extent, even a fall in the rate of inflation, rate of inflation also could be taken as okay. Yeah. Now let's let's uh, uh, proceed further. All of the following are characteristics of a common market, except which one? Except which one? Um, Uh, common levels of direct taxation 
since it's government's policy not to be commanded by market. Kavi, do you have a Free trade in uh, goods and services among member states, common level of uh, direct taxation, free movement of factors of production between member states, and a common external tariff. So, in that case, um, common market will have free trade in goods and services among member states. Um, free movement of factors of production between member states, a common external tariff. Uh, each economy will have their own uh, set of tax, tax laws. So common levels of direct tax cannot be the answer. So that is except which one is correct. If a group of countries adopt free trade uh, themselves, establish a common external tariff and allow free movement of factors of production between member states, what is this called? Is it a single market? Is it an economic union, a custom union, or a free trade area? Let me just put you to that. It chapter it belong. what's a free trade area free trade area it says internal barriers to trade in goods and services are removed then uh, internal barriers whatever are ba the barriers may be like registration licensing etc so those things are removed so that every uh, i mean entrepreneur who wants to enter into the market is free to do so so internal barriers to trade in goods and services are removed okay then comes custom union. Custom union talks about free trade area plus the establishment of common external tariff. So this plus this. Single markets are free trade areas plus the free movement of labor and capital within the market. It may also be customs union, but doesn't have to be. But what is customs uh, uh, union? Customs union is there are no internal barriers is one thing. Plus the establishment of common external tariff. There are two points here. The um, single market could be a custom union or need not be. Then fourth one, economic unions. Economic unions are single markets with a common currency. Like uh, in the European market, it is the euros which, uh, which are used for trade. Um, see, the question is talking about these four things. See, is it a single market? Is it an economic union? Is it a customs union or is it a free trade area. So a group of countries adopt free trade themselves. They also have an extra common external tariff. So free trade is free trade area. With a common external tariff, then it becomes a, a custom union. So this, this has only one feature. This plus this, um, that is the common external tariff will be customs union along with that allow free movement of factors of protection so along the along with that if there are free movement of uh, factors of protection free trade area has only removal of internal barriers customs union has internal barriers plus a common external tariff single market will have free trade area common uh, external tariff because it says single market could also customs union could also be a single market Apart from that, they also have free movement of labor and capital within the market. So therefore, it is a single market. Now, economic unions are when the 
currency is common. So let's just also check if the currency is common. Uh, establish a common external factor. After that, um, allow free movement of factors of production, but there is no mention about common currency. So if it becomes a common currency, then it becomes an economic union, but because it has only three aspects of it, no internal uh, barriers for free trade, there is also a common external tariff. The third one is they allow free movement of factors of production, so then it would be called as a single market. One zero nine. Which of the following statements is false? The uh, international trade allows countries to specialize. International trade allows consumers to a wider range of goods and services. International trade brings about economies of scale. Um, international trade leads to international competition and high prices. So, what's the answer? International trade allows countries to specialize. That is true. Okay, this is true because uh, the competition becomes severe. So they focus on uh, specialization, uh, differentiation, cost control, quality aspects. So all of them would be taken up whenever international trade happens. So international trade allows countries to specialize. International trade allows consumers to a wider range of uh, goods and services. What was earlier not allowed uh, or not available for them is also now opened and available to them. International trade brings about economies of scale. So when the production happens at a larger scale, when the domestic companies uh, enter into the global market, already they have captured the domestic market. So the uh, production is taking up at that scale. And when they go beyond that and capture the international market, then the production definitely increases. When the production increases, um, when the scale of operation increases, it will result in economies of scale. So that is also um, one aspect of it or one advantage of it. International trade leads to international competition. Yes, it is. This part of it is correct, but it will result in decrease in prices, not higher prices, because the competition is severe to sustain in the market, to compete with foreign players. Um, See, what happens is the best value to the customer is provided. One aspect of it is lowering the prices. So if it is higher prices, it is false. Which two of the following would lead to a country's balance of payments, current account to move for, towards a surplus? Which is correct too. A rise in commodity exports and inflow of foreign capital into the economy. An increase in foreign tourism into the country, an increase in government tax uh, receipt. So surplus is when the difference between exports and uh, imports. So surplus is a situation where we are talking about balance of payment, the reserves, the foreign reserves, if they have more of foreign reserves. So then in that case, um, if they export, they send, the, um, they sell the goods and they receive higher uh, reserves. If they import, they have to use their foreign reserves to make payment to the foreign players. So a surplus is a situation wherein they get more uh, foreign reserves. Um, so more foreign reserves are possible when they export a lot of goods. So export, a rise in commodity, so we see that export is greater than imports. Is a situation where there is surplus. A rise in commodity exports, so this is one thing. An inflow of foreign capital into the economy. The foreign capital into the economy is only about foreign uh, investment, foreign direct investment, that's it. It is, it, uh, uh, would it result in a surplus? 
see this uh, the situation is what is available with the government in terms of the foreign reserves so this is just an investment which is made um, it is not resulting into the cash flows um, and investment made um, then an increase in foreign tourism this is a source of revenue foreign tourism into the country so more foreigners come and then spend their foreign currency on various things so a lot of foreign reserves come into the country so uh, here we see that foreign uh, cash inflows cash inflows are greater than cash outflows so that is again another situation cash inflows by increase in foreign uh, tourism into the um, country uh, increase in government tax receipts the government tax receipts are just about uh, uh, the controlling the flow of cash flows in the economy it has um, i mean it is not connected to the balance of payment it is not talking about what happens to the foreign reserves um, so two of them would be a and One one one. A deficit on a country's balance of payments, a current account, can be financed by a surplus. Surplus of uh, exports over imports of invisible exports over invisible imports. Then on the capital account of taxes over expenditure. A deficit on the country's balance of payments current account. In the current account, current account which is used regularly for the transactions. So, the amount of capital investment that is made is um, accounted into the capital account. The um, the uh, the regular transactions that take place are uh, they do affect the current account. See now in the current account there is a deficit. A deficit on the country's balance of payments current account. Now this can be financed by a surplus from. So uh, the surplus is from either is is it uh, by exports over imports or invisible exports over invisible imports or we see that uh, on the capital account or of taxes over expenditure. So. Let me put you to the um, types of accounts. Okay, balance of payments. The balance of payment has two main elements. One is the current account, all trade in goods and services, and payments for factor services. So, so the regular transactions that take place are all. Um, Accounted into the current account. The capital and the financial accounts take care of the uh, investments that are raised, the amount of capital that is raised and used for acquiring the external assets, ex ex in external assets and liabilities such as capital inflows and capital outflows. So now, in this current account, according to that question, there is a deficit. Now, there is a deficit. See, there may be a surplus or deficit on the combined current and capital account. This is financed by a deficit or surplus on the financial account. Okay. So now here in this case, now we see that there is a deficit in the current account. So this deficit in the current account can be can be settled by see the current account can be settled by the capital account, capital or the financial account. So here we have only one thing that is the uh, capital account. So the current account deficit can be financed by a surplus from the capital account. One, one, two, all of the following statements are true except which one? Import quotas tend to reduce prices. 
trade protection tends to reduce consumer choice trade protection tends to reduce exports tariffs tend to reduce competition so this is a part of uh, protectionism so as part of protectionism see uh, what actually uh, happens the import taxes the countries might try to limit limit imports by uh, import taxes having a uh, quota restriction on what has to be imported etc exported uh, non tariff barriers such as safety regulations and subsidies to domestic uh, producers this is to uh, protect um, the domestic players who are there in that so by limiting imports just a second So, uh, wait a bit. Question number one, one, two. All of the following statements are true except which one? Import quotas tend to reduce prices. Trade protection tends to reduce consumer choice. Trade protection tends to reduce exports. Tariffs tend to reduce competition. Import quotas. So, when there are restrictions on limiting, limiting, limiting of. Um, when there is limiting of uh, imports, the consequence of limiting of import, these are the consequences, the problems that arise. So when um, import taxes um, are increased to discourage imports, there are quotas which are uh, uh, laid out as to how much can be imported, non-tariff barriers such as safety regulations, etc. So the problems with this are, the intention is to um, limit the import so that the domestic players can be protected, protectionism. So that is about the protectionism. Now, in this case, what happens when the competition um, is reduced? Because foreign players or foreign um, 
material of quality, uh, foreign quality standards which were earlier followed now, uh, need not be followed. So inefficiency is encouraged because competition is limited. Now it will be only the domestic players. If the foreign players enter into the domestic market, then they along with that, then bring the quality standards, etc. So the price part of it, all of them can be um, brought into the uh, domestic economy. Such a thing would not be now be available. So the competition is limited. Then prices are raised, thus reducing living standards. Retaliation would be there uh, on the company, country's exports may occur. So if they do not import, then uh, the foreign countries also may uh, retaliate and um, they may refuse to ex um, take the exported material. So that retaliation can be there. Resources are misallocated. Uh, then income distribution is altered with income being shifted from consumers to producers. Now, according to uh, this particular question, what could be... Um, all of the following statements are true, except which one? The trade protection tends to reduce consumer choice is correct. Uh, trade protection tends to reduce exports because there is retaliation, retaliation from foreign uh, countries. Tariffs tend to reduce competition. Competition would be reduced. That is also correct. Import quotas tend to reduce prices. So import quotas tend to reduce prices. The price reduction is not what we see here, but prices are raised, thus reducing living standards. So in that situation, we go with, they do not tend to reduce prices, but they increase the prices. Which one of the following is not associated with the process of the globalization of production? Not associated. One, and it is not associated with the process of the globalization of production. Rising trade ratios for uh, economies, concentration of production close to markets, then increasing production by transnational corporations, increased international factor mobility. The globalization, the link between economies in a globalized world, the main links between economies are International trade in goods and services, the ratio of trade to national income has risen in virtually all economies because they uh, it become it is easy to um, enter into the global market and trade there. So international trade in goods and services. So that has uh, brought about a change in the ratio of uh, trade to national income. Has risen virtually. So as the trade increases, the national income also increases. Okay, that is the first point. International movements of capital and labor. So uh, foreign players invest directly into the uh, country, foreign direct investors, investments, then uh, people from the domestic investors from the domestic market also take up investments in foreign countries. So there is international movement of capital and labor the development of international markets for resources, including capital and for foreign exchange. Then the growth of multinational companies. So the impacts are industrial relocation. So industries, um, see, it, it would be uh, in terms of why would they relocate? See, where the factors of production are available, um, the industries are relocated there so because Otherwise, every resources has to be brought about to the place where the activity is carried on. Rather, instead of so many factors of production to be moved here, the uh, main thing, labor, then the capital has to be brought into the economy, the, the other resources. So instead of that, the industry itself will be re relocated. That's one impact. 
emergence of growth markets then access to markets and enhanced competition see what was not available earlier now has become possible for the consumers so consumers are um, better off now with the uh, um, access to markets and enhanced competition cross national business alliances and mergers happen so the organizations in different countries can come together they can be a cross national business alliance alliance where strategic alliance where they can join together and carry out the business activities need not be a separate entity is set up but they can come together to share their expertise and carry on with the business activities that would be possible and also can think about merging one business with another so some uh, uh, some of them can think about taking over another um, business from another country such things are possible widening economic divisions between countries <clears throat> now accord uh, one one three which one of the following is not associated not associated with the process of globalization now here in this case we see rising trade ratios for economies a uh, trade ratio to the national income is increasing isn't it then um, b says concentration of production close to markets increasing production by transnational uh, corporations increased international factor mobility um one one is not that not associated so one is associated with uh, globalization concentration of production close to markets international movement of uh, factors of production is also there so we see the second point is international movement of um, factors of production development of international markets for resources including capital and foreign exchange growth of multinational companies can we go with the concentration of production close to market that close to markets is close to availability of resources increased production by transnational they can um, join as a strategic alliance or merges so this is also correct increased international factor mobility so there is factor mobility also correct so we uh, we have to go with b concentration of production close to market it's not close to market it is close to uh, the availability of factors of production that's why uh, industries are relocated relocated not to not close to the market but close to the availability of resources all of the following will increase the process of globalization of production except which one will increase the process of globalization of production except which one so this is reductions in international transport cost higher levels of tariff reduced barriers to international capital movements uh, increased similarity in demand patterns between countries the globalization is uh, um, easing up various things so whatever restrictions earlier were there now uh, they are reduced see red reduction in international transport cost here it says uh, higher level of levels of tariffs in fact actually all tariffs are reduced the uh, barriers whatever are there are reduced so reduced barriers to international capital movements increased similarity in demand patterns between countries so the one which is not a part of globalization is higher level of tariff see things are simplified in there uh, any kind of a barrier which is there it is all 
eased eased up and uh, people are free to uh, move uh, from one one place to one market to another market the enter into any um, economy investment consider investing there or attracting investment from those countries etc so we do not see barriers in globalization things have uh, become simple b says higher levels of tariff so that will not uh, that will be and that point is not according to globalization so we select that one a sushi restaurant chain finds that demand for its food in a foreign country has increased rapidly over the past decade this is an example of an impact of demand for um, foreign food demand for its food in a foreign country has increased rapidly over the past decade is it internationalization protectionism aggregation or globalization so um, we go with which one of them the uh, things are opened up um uh, see so internationalization um if we basically talk about uh, opening up uh, um trade into um, see the restrictions are removed uh, so that is uh, uh, entering into international market protectionism focuses on protecting the domestic uh, players in the market so they, there are so many restrictions which are laid down by the government to protect the domestic suppliers and the producers in the economy so therefore imports are restricted there there are certain tariffs laid there are certain quotas brought about into picture so that is to ensure that the domestic suppliers or the producers are protected that is protectionism here here it talks about uh, demand for the foreign food in a foreign country sushi restaurant chain finds that demand for its food in foreign country has increased rapidly over the past decade so is it aggregation aggregation talks about the activity that happens in an economy it is not involving a foreign economy the aggregate demand the when the aggregation is about producing more number of goods and then on account of that increasing the percentage of employment or providing more employment opportunities to the people in the economy so that is aggregate demand is talking about what activity takes place in the economy but globalization is opening up doors for foreign players so uh, consumers are now uh, provided with a choice with better quality better products uh, earlier which was not there is now possible because of globalization okay on that note it becomes globalization 116 says all of the following are features of globalization except one which one of which one is the uh, exception rising trade ratios international um, increased international capital flow improved terms of trade for all countries improved terms of trade for all countries reduced barriers for international factor movement um reduced barriers yeah you want to say something kavya no ma'am no ma'am no i felt that you said ma'am okay no no uh, rising trade ratio is correct because the percentage of international trade to the national income has increased so rising trade ratio is correct increased international capital flows uh, mobility of capital and labor we see that um, that is also uh, a correct thing improved terms of trade for all countries improved terms of trade for all um countries so globalization is opening doors for everyone so that that's the concept of globalization so the terms of 
ट्रेड फॉर ऑल कंट्रीज इम्प्रूव टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड देर आर सी टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड आर नॉट देर देर आर नो बैरियर देर आर नो रेस्ट्रिक्शन थिंग्स है eased up so the terms of trade the way they would trade uh, so those terms and conditions have improved is what in fact actually it is reduction of barriers it is not the terms of trade are improvised so then uh, reduction reduced barriers to international factor movement so that is also correct so on that note we go with c c is the answer With reference to pestle pestle analysis, which one of the the following statements is true? Pestle, <clears throat> these are the factors: uh, political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal factors. The uh, the first one says that one form of political risk is government measures to improve the competitiveness of um, national companies. political risk is confined to less developed countries a tax increase is never the result of political forces and can uh, therefore not be considered a political risk all of the um, above A says one form of political risk is government measures uh, to improve the competitiveness of national companies. Government measures to improve the competitiveness of national companies. B says political risk is confined to less development less developed countries. Nothing like that. Political risk is basically political instability. Where political instability can be found in developed countries and underdeveloped countries also a tax increase is never the result of political force it is the result of political force so whatever is the political party in ruling they take a decision about what should be the tax norms so it is never the result of political forces is a wrong thing the all of them are uh, correct all of the above are correct is cannot be correct because b b have uh, looked into as it is not correct um uh, so therefore d automatically is ruled out so now let's look at what is a a says one form of political risk is government measures to improve the competitiveness of um, national company huh. that is a, a political stand that taken by the uh, government so is a government measure to improve the competitiveness of national companies we go with a which of the following would a transport company monitor under the political heading as part of a pestle analysis tracking systems to monitor driver hours anti theft devices developments in tire technology as part of pestle analysis transport company monitor under the political head so which one is a political feature so tech tracking systems to monitor driver or anti theft devices is all technological technical as tt part of it then state of the economy oil price movements and rise in interest rates so state of economy is economic factors fuel tax congestion charges in cities plans to build new roads is environmental predicted car numbers and usage public concerns over safety political heading what do you think is the right answer fuel tax congestion charges in cities plans to build new roads See, this is uh, political because uh, the tax is the decision of the government so that's a political decision which is taken up any kind of congestion charges um, in cities uh, plans to build new roads etc is political 
Polter predicted Polter. car numbers and usage, public concerns over uh, safety. Uh, that no. What happened? No, no, ma'am. I'm just seeing the question. Okay. okay. Um. So this this comes under uh, P E predicted car. So if it is um, um, safety measures, it is about the um, predicted car numbers and usage. This is about um, social the concept. way people uh, see car numbers and usage. See, there is uh, the taste and preferences of people. So on that note, uh, we can go with this one as social. Yeah. Okay. State of the economy, oil. Uh, that is economic factor. That is economic factor. Economic factor in the economy. What happens? So, if it is political heading, we have to choose T. Hmm. W is a national uh, chain of bars and nightclubs considering extending their operations overseas. Match up the following macroeconomic factors with the heading. They would be analyzed under in a pestil analysis. So, let's write what what. The, uh, what is the variable here? The age at which people are allowed to uh, drink alcohol. So legal. Okay. Uh, it is something to do with the law. So it is legal. L. Government tax on sales of alcohol. It is political. It is the government's decision. The level of disposable income people have in the economy, so it, the uh, grow, uh, GDP, national income, um, interest rates, um, uh, per capita income, the uh, trade cycle, these are all about the uh, economic, economic scenario. So level of disposable income people have is about economic factors. People's religious belief, people, whenever it says people's beliefs and etc., is about social. Okay, so yeah. with this, we uh, now we have uh, one more chapter on international aspects. So, if we do that, we would be done for uh, uh, the international part of it. The rest of it is uh, simple financial management and uh, little uh, amount of statistics is what we have to learn. The financial context of business to international aspects. So technically the syllabus is kind of vast only. Uh, there's so many aspects which are covered. Just not the domestic economy, it's also about the international economy, international aspects. Um, I'll do little content and then we'll wind it up a little early only today. Uh, we can continue tomorrow. Uh, international aspects, we see what have we to learn about. We have international markets, exchange rate regimes, single currency zones, and forex risk. So what are international markets? See, when the trade takes place between uh, uh, countries, then we can call that to be as international markets. So in the international markets, see, when the transactions take place, the foreign currencies are involved. So the trade happens. Um, with the help of foreign currencies, exchange of foreign currencies. So we need to look into what is the exchange rate uh, at the time of payment or receipt because the transactions would be taken up. Um, the transactions would be taken up in terms of uh, foreign currency. See if the trading is for a short term period. So then the currency is called as euro currency. If the transaction is only for a short period of time. If it is for a medium period of time, medium term, it is called as euro credit. But then if it is for a long term, we call that as euro bond. See, the term euro, when do we use the term euro? The term euro is used whenever the uh, transaction happens in a currency other than the domestic currency. So then that would be called as a euro. The term euro means security is denominated in a currency other than that of the investors. So the investor. Uh, has um, see, would have a domestic currency for taking up the transaction, but because of trading with foreign countries and international markets, now the trade will happen 
with foreign currency so any currency other than the domestic currency or the local currency we call that to be as euro the term euro means securities denominated in a currency other than that of the investor then we see there are foreign exchange markets where the purchase and sale of foreign exchange so people trade in foreign uh, currency so they purchase foreign currency and at the appropriate time they sell foreign currency so if they are already holding foreign currencies if the, if it is the right time to reap benefit they can sell the foreign currency so people do trade in foreign currencies so the purchase and sale of foreign exchange uh, helps finance uh, international trade as part of financial asset management to benefit from movements in exchange rates to manage exchange rate risk see for the purchase of sale and uh, sale of uh, foreign exchange that will help in uh, finance international trade it is also as part of financial asset management if they invest into foreign currencies to benefit from movements in exchange rates so exchange rate fluctuates from time to time so whenever it is beneficial for them to buy it and sell it such kind of transactions can be taken up so that they can increase their profitability so to benefit from the movements in exchange rates then why do they invest into foreign exchanges if at all if there is any risk associated with holding the foreign currency that can be hedged or managed uh, with by holding another uh, country's currency so to manage exchange rate risk any exchange rate risk arises because of holding some other currency that can be offset by holding some other country's currency uh, spot transactions when immediately it happens on the spot the transaction is settled we call that as spot transaction are undertaken almost immediately and settled within two days but if the uh, transaction if the date when the transaction would be settled is in the future as on a future date if the settlement happens yesterday i did mention to you about derivative agreements so they do not take up the transaction immediately on the spot but they defer that to a future date as on that future date the transaction would be completed um, let's say there is a, uh, at, at the domestic front what are uh, I and mean, how does it work so very basic thing let's say that i'll give you a very basic example because we still have to move ahead and then talk about the forwards and then futures and options and all so let me just give you some basic idea or understanding about what is derivative let's say there is a producer of uh, some crop let's take it as uh, wheat wheat is what uh, there is a producer of wheat produces so the wheat would be available after a uh, period of time because it is it cannot be instantly produced so as on that date the producer uh, when the crop is already available then he would be able to sell that in the market so if he is waiting for a period of time by the time the crop is ready and when he wants to sell that uh, crop at that time the price should be the right price otherwise it would uh, um, all his effort will go waste if the price is not right right if the prices are lower then he producing it and waiting for such long period of time to sell it at a lower price is disheartening then what what he does he finds another trader so this producer finds a trader enters into an agreement so that's a derivative contract he enters into an agreement uh, with the trader so some uh, some buyer buyer of this crop uh, but the crop is all not ready it is not readily available it would be uh, available in in the future period so as on that date when the crop is available at that time uh, the producer of the crop will be able to sell but 
he is little hesitant about what would be the prevailing price therefore he may consider entering into a derivative agreement uh, deciding what would be the price at which the product would be sold so they pre decide on what would be the price so in respect of what price prevails in the market as on the date when the crop is to be sold in respect of that price the transaction will be completed that is sale of wheat and buying of wheat will be completed at the pre decided already decided price okay so when they enter into such an agreement it is to offset any kind of a risk arising because of price fluctuation so even if the price goes very low also the uh, merchant or the trader who has entered into the agreement since he has already agreed on the price he will have to complete that trans uh, um, he has to fulfill the contract at the defined price okay now that is the situation so here we see that the producer is um, benefited he is in situations where the price is very low he can still continue he can still manage to sell it at a higher price what if the price rises if the price rises we see that the trader benefits because he would be buying it at a lower price from the producer of the wheat and then he can get benefited by selling it in the market at a higher price see if uh, we see that there are uh, different types of derivatives one is called as a forward uh, derivative one is a future derivative one is option and the other one is swap the forwards are anybody can uh, enter into an agreement with another one that is what uh, we call it as over the counter um, these are over the counter derivatives anybody can enter into that and then uh, um, see they have to fulfill the uh, commitment but because uh, all these arrangements agreements happen over the counter if uh, if one of the party uh, defaults it doesn't fulfill that See, there is no protection or there is no uh, legal um, authority to guide them so that 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 uh, possibility of a high default is present in case of forwards but uh, in case of futures it would not be there so this contract would be uh, traded in a um, exchange so there are um, um, the trade markets where the transaction would be entered into uh, only under the uh, their supervision or uh, um, if if at all if there is a default there would be um, the uh, uh, in between there is uh, uh, i mean the law would protect them uh, if if somebody defaults that that, that is futures uh, option see we have options as um whoever writes the uh, derivative the writer of the derivative the writer whoever writes that enters into the agreement he will always have an option whether he wants to fulfill the agreement or not if he is beneficial for him he can exercise his option to fulfill complete the transaction if it is not beneficial to him then in that case um, he can uh, go back on that so he he doesn't have any kind of an obligation to fulfill see if he does not fulfill his obligation see the other party uh, whoever has accepted the derivative uh, on request of the writer see will he be uh, at a loss no in case of option if he is not exercising that then uh, he has to pay some option premium there is some amount of premium see this is all to safeguard the parties from facing adverse situations and risky risky situations in the future if risk is present in the future to safeguard themselves against the risk or to manage that kind of risk um, the investors or the people enter into derivative agreements okay here um, we see that if uh, if there are people dealing with foreign currencies they also can enter into derivative agreements so for forward transactions involve entering into a transaction now for delivery on a future date so they there is an agreement here to buy and sell the foreign currency so but the foreign currency is not bought and sold 
on the spot immediately it is not done but these parties enter into an agreement to fulfill the agreement on a future date the date is not now but it is in the future effectively fixing the price of the currency in advance so no matter what is the prevailing exchange rate on the date when they enter into an agreement irrespective of that or um, what would be the price on the future date also is not considered but whatever is the price which both the parties agree upon the the transaction will be completed at that specific that fixed price of currency so they have to fulfill this agreement at the pre decided price included in the agreement so we call that as forward agreements forward rate agreements forward transactions involve entering into a transaction now because foreign currency the value keeps fluctuating as the time passes by the um, in such situation when um, parties or people enter into uh, the agreement deciding on deciding a particular date and deciding the price now they enter into an uh, agreement to fulfill the agreement at the pre decided price on a future date that is called as forward transaction now a simple example about uh, what impact would be there because of fluctuation for an exchange rate so a foreign exchange rate is the price of a currency expressed related to another currency the uh, here there is an example given if it is 108.21 yen it is equal to 1 us dollar so most of the time we keep listing to two currencies one is what is the um, what is the 1 dollar worth in terms of rupees so 1 dollar is equal to some 70 plus rupees 1 pound is equal to close to 100 rupees so that is how we uh, i mean get to understand get to know that so here also this is an example given it says that 108.21 yen yen is japanese currency is equal to 1 dollar so if the transaction is in dollars if it if the uh, if people in the uh, in japan have to uh, complete the transaction anything which is worth 1 dollar to fulfill that transaction they will have to spend 108.21 yen this means that it it would take 108.21 japanese yen to purchase 1 dollar or that 1 1 us dollars could purchase 108.21 japanese yen now when an exchange rate changes so if the exchange rate changes from 108.21 to something else it could increase it could decrease uh changes one of the currencies will appreciate strengthen relative to the other and the other will de depreciate rel relative to the first currency so there is an example here here in the situation 1 us dollar is worth 108 yen yen okay now if the value of um, yen has come down to 105 for every 1 us dollar 1 dollar 1 us dollar is worth 105 yen the yen has appreciated yen has appreciated because now to uh, acquire 1 dollar they don't have to spend 108 but it is enough if they spend only 105 yen so yen has strengthened the rate now has uh, reduced therefore yen has uh, strengthened yen has become stronger otherwise with a weak yen it was only on spending 108.21 yen they were able to uh, acquire 1 us dollar but now little less than that so 105 yen if they spend they can acquire 1 us dollar so the yen yen has appreciated and the us dollar has depreciated qr n are now needed to purchase the dollar and the dollar doesn't purchase as many yen as before so earlier with 1 dollar they were able to buy 108.21 yen but now they will be able to purchase only 105 Yen with one dollar.
foreign exchange risk there are uh, three types of uh, foreign exchange risk one is economic risk transaction risk and translation risk economic risk says that long term movements in exchange rates can undermine a firm's competitive advantage it says that for example a strengthening currency will make an exporter's products more expensive to overseas um, customers on uh, one way of managing this risk um, see if there are fluctuations let's say if there is one uh, currency which is um, strengthened in the long run then it becomes difficult for them to carry on with the economic activity economic activity buying and selling so if one currency is consistently being strengthened then um, whenever they um, see here here in this case it's it's mentioned about strengthening it could also have an impact when it weakens also so if it is uh, strengthened so strengthened it indicates that uh, they will ha have less less uh, uh, currencies uh, needed to spend for every one single dollar dollar or the uh, one single unit of foreign currency so in that case the uh, when they export their goods then in that case they would get lesser value of the domestic currency because domestic currency has already strengthened less amount is needed so in that case even after exporting the goods also because their domestic currency is strengthened they will receive lesser amount vice versa so if let's say if the um, domestic currency has weakened more amount of uh, Uh, currency uh, as as against single unit of foreign currency. In case of imports, when they import, they will have to spend lot of domestic currency. So that has an impact. If there are fluctuations over a long period of time, the economic transactions that take place get affected. So any kind of a risk which arises because of fluctuations in foreign currency over a long period of time. we call that to be as economic risk what is a transaction risk transaction risk says that in the time period between an order being agreed the the day when they enter into an agreement and when it is completed when the payment is made so during this time period also there could be fluctuations in the foreign currency so because of fluctuations in foreign currency by the time the transaction is set to be completed if there are fluctuations in foreign currencies any amount of risk which arises on account of those fluctuations we call that to be as transaction risk okay in the time period between an order being agreed and payment received the exchange rate can move causing the final value of the transaction to be more or less than originally envisaged so because of that there could be a risk uh, which is possible so here the suggestion says that therefore enter into derivative agreements like forwards or futures or anything and uh, enter into that and then complete the transaction at that pre decided price so that that uh, it's called as hedging transaction this can be hedged by buying or selling forward rate agreement so that is the solution which is given translation this see when uh, one business has um, units in foreign countries so in that case um, assets are there in the foreign countries also as on a particular date when the uh, assets have to be converted into the domestic currency so it is to be translated into the domestic currency local currency why do they have to do that it says that if a company has foreign assets a factory denoted in another currency then their value in its home currency will depend on the exchange rate the uh, it's not needed all the time that they have to convert but let's say if there is a parent company in a domestic country and their subsidiary units are present in foreign countries on the date when the financial transactions are to be disclosed then uh, uh, the subsidiaries accounts will be consolidated with the parent company's accounts so all the assets which were um, i mean the all the 
transactions which were recorded in the foreign currency in the foreign country now has to be consolidated added to the parent company's financial transactions so if the currencies are different then the subsidiary will have to translate all the assets and liabilities which are presented in the foreign currency into the domestic or the local currency while translating the foreign uh, the value of the assets which is there in foreign currency uh, on on translation if there is a risk arises we call that to be as translation risk if it's domestic currency strengthens for example then foreign assets will appear to fall in value okay this risk however is not realized unless the asset is sold so um the only i mean this would be a book book value book adjustment only actual loss will be only when the asset is sold so until then it is just a book transaction okay so foreign exchange risk there are broadly we speak about one is economic risk one is transaction risk and one is translation risk economic risk because of the economic activities that take place and the foreign currency uh either strengthens or uh, i mean the domestic currency weakens or it strengthens so there would be an impact on the imports and exports so any kind of such an impact which is there we can call that to be as a economic risk transaction from the date when they agree upon to complete a transaction and the day when they com they actually complete the transaction in between these time period if there is any fluctuation in the foreign currency on account of if there is risk arising then we call that to be as transaction risk then translation risk is if this, there is a parent company in the home uh, domestic country and uh, um, the subsidiaries are in the foreign countries and then their assets when they have to be consolidated with the parent company's uh, statement on translating the value value of the assets there could be any uh, some amount of risk arising so that's called as translation risk so uh, these are the three different types of foreign exchange risk i hope it is clear but I, as we keep discussing the uh, mcqs also we will once again revise so that's not an issue um, i will end the session here today okay